Okay, so um, I made some hammer handles uh, for me hammers. One of them's too short, so it's uh, redo time. There we go, we're marking up some wood. Some of this may become clear later, but may not. Doing this with far more precision than is actually required. Obviously using the table of your milling machine is absolutely the right place to do this when you have a precision flat, but um, my precision flat is not accessible at the moment. Let's do is to come down about 3mm from there. So that's that marked. Now some uh, some some punching. Wibble wobble. Where's my punch? No precision particularly required on this, but we are going to be turning it on a fairly high precision machine. Turning between centres, but oval. So that's that. Next, over to the lathe. So, like I said, uh, no real need for precision on this. This is fairly ad hoc, um, but why not? We'll turn it between centres. If I can find my centre drive. Where did I put you? Oh gosh, I know I had it here earlier. Which one down the back? Box from the squares has. Oh, oh yes, there we go. So we're going to be turning this from a piece of oak. Um, now, as I said, no real need for precision, which is why we're going between centres. <laughs> um, if you do need precision and you're turning between centres, don't cut corners. I learnt that one to my, to my cost recently when I was, um, I was turning uh, yeah, when I was turning the uh, the bearing lands on the spindle for the mill, total cock up, um, and I really do mean total and utter balls over, balls up of the highest quality. Which way are we? Yeah, that way. Um, I didn't bother checking this centre and it was running out by about three and a half, uh, three and a half? no, 35 microns. Yeah, running out by about 35 microns. Uh, that causes a problem because 
what you're turning then isn't concentric with what it's supposed to be concentric with. Um, in this case, the other bearing lands. Um, so I ended up with bearing lands that were oh, not concentric by about seven and a half hundredths of a millimetre. Not good. Not good at all, not good at all. Right, okay, we're not going to use you for turning wood, are we? Hope you ask that. Let's have an aluminium insert. How's that one looking? That looks all right. Aluminium inserts much sharper, um, so better for tree bothering. Now then, let's move you all the way back in, and all the way back in. Yes. Okay. Now, yeah, where's the most most out part? It's about there, isn't it? So about there, lock in, and away we go. Can we see what's going on? I don't know. Let's have a look. Let's put some manual photos, a little bit of a zoom in there, shall we? A little bit of a turn. I've got a handle on this that's made for doing that. And some manual focus. There you go. Are we focused in on the thing we're supposed to be focused in on? Hang on, let's have a look. There, manual focus. Right. Are we out? Yes, we're out. Some oil around the head. taking off quite a lot of wood. Okay, we can go in a bit more. side, which is the furthest side away, down to, I don't know if you can make that out, the line that I scored down the centre, almost. And what we're going to do now is pop that out and put it on the other centre, if we can. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Well, 
obviously, obviously, it would be nice if I had a lathe where I could travel all the way down in one pop. But this is a Swiss toolmaker's lathe that doesn't do that. So. there and let's do the next bit And thusly, by the simple expedient of turning on two centres, like so, we've made, can we see that? I think we probably can. Let's go back into autofocus mode. How about that? So, by the expedient of turning through two centres, we've turned an oval handle, ovalish, anyway. There you go. Next up, a bit of manual turning. This is to do the traditional necked in part of, uh, of the hammer handle. And now we're going to turn manually. Like so. And what we need is a piece of. do me the rest I will do with a spoke shave because I'm shit at hand turning anyway here you go that's uh, roughed out the shape of a hammer blank
The spoke shave is an incredibly versatile tool that in the hands of a craftsman can be used to, uh, to produce some wonderful, some wonderful stuff. In the hands of a wood butcher, um, like me, you can just about make a handle for a hammer from it, with it, from it, still. I'm going to hit that with some sandpaper and see how it looks. So, um, quick sanding on the lathe, just by hand, um, and we've got a reasonable shape. Okay, there's a bit of a bit of a dent in there where I went a bit overboard with the uh, with the, with the spoke shave, but we're pretty good. So all that's left now to do is to cut that down to to make the tang for the for the head, uh, thin this end out slightly. And, uh, and we'll be good to go. But that's me for this evening. So, this is the spindle for, for the mill. Um, I'm stuck with using it because it's got thread and a bearing land here that I need. And I can't cut threads this size on my lathe. I can't cut any threads on my lathe if they're, if they're not done with a tap, actually. Tap or die. So what I needed here was a 40 mil bearing land, those are 35s, and this whole thing came out, it was much wider here. You see a second bearing land here, it was much wider here. Um, so I cut my 40 mil bearing land here, um, which was off centre, so I recentered the whole damn thing by re-milling, re uh, re-milling, re-cutting my centre in place, making sure everything was running properly. Um, I cut a very slight taper on here and what I was going to do was take this piece which I bored to be uh, three hundredths undersized, um, heated up and dropped on. Unfortunately it dropped on and snagged on the end and by the time I'd realised it had snagged on the end it was shrinking, it was transferring heat to this which was growing and the whole thing is bit, which means that this is now stuck. Um, I can't turn it off. Well, I can't. I could turn it off. Um, the problem is that my bearing land needs to be here, um, and that's going to be a problem. So I think what I may have to do is either cut this, chisel it to open it up, and remake another piece. That's one option. Um, I could cut this thing in half and shrink fit a whole new end on it. Um, take this piece off, make a whole, make a whole new spindle. Take this piece off and shrink fit it in. Um, I don't know. Um, I think what's going to happen is that I'm going to cut this all the way through, almost all the way through, uh, to where the to where the join is. Effectively, this is now one piece of metal. But if I split this and then hit a chisel I should be able to split this enough that it will come off um, and then uh, do the whole thing over again with perhaps a little less or a little more clearance a little more heat and um, probably some Loctite I don't know um, it's a pain. The fact that this is slightly tapered means that I can't slide a ring onto here um, unless it's Loctited and even then it's likely to be a little bit on the on the slack side. Um, yeah, pain in the hole. Otherwise it's uh, make up a whole new spindle but that means going to see my mate cutting threads on his lathe. It's a pain in the ass, frankly. Anyway, so yeah, if you're shrink fitting stuff check and double check make sure that you've got your exact sizes um, that's about a hundredth too small given the, the distance that it uh, that it didn't go on such stuff wish those cows would shut the fuck up anyway night all